Simon from simonwood.com. Now, today I am feeling spicy um, because I've got five spicy whites in front of me. Well, spicy is maybe the wrong word. It, when people say spicy white wines, it doesn't mean that someone's sort of gone out and tipped some garam masala into uh, the fermenting vat, but um, it's, I suppose, more accurate. It would be floral, aromatic, but um, that sounds a bit flowery and aromatic. Anyway, I'll shut up. Actually, no, I won't shut up. That's why you're watching, isn't it? Uh, so I've got uh, how many wines from Alsace? Two Alsace, uh, two, uh, well, one from New Zealand, one from Australia, and one from Chile. Uh, this is a Gentil from Hugel, and it's basically one of those. It's a blend of um, all the uh, all the great varieties that they. Uh, uh, you think is it, is it stuff that wasn't good enough to go into everything else? Well, they would of course never say that. I think the idea is to blend something that shows the aromatic achievements that are possible in the wonderful place that is Alsace. Uh, so there's probably some Gewurztraminer and Pinot Gris and uh, Pinot Blanc and a bit of Riesling and a bit of Silvana and a bit of uh, everything else. Um, they uh, they used to call wines like this was Edelsvicker. Um, I, li I like the term Edelsvicker. More Edelsvicker, Vicker. Um, but uh, Hugel's calls as a gentil, gentle. Well, it's certainly got a nice gentle aroma, and it's got some of those spicy Alsace character. It's got the lye cheese. It's got a bit of the nutty, uh, toasty richness of something like Pinot Gris, um, where, as it is here. We've got we're moving on to Pinot Gris in a moment, and um, yeah, but it's yes, it's it's this. It's got this sappiness and richness, a nice mix of juicy, very ripe citrus flavours with the more exotic things like the lye cheese, the rose petals, the Turkish delight, that type of character. But then you taste it. And it's got, I don't know if it's got a lot of Silvana in there, but there's this almost like this smoky core and uh, uh, keeping it all fresh. So the aromas are there around it, but then the running through the middle is this spine of smokiness and um, quite tight, pithy in character. Grapefruit peel, things like think think of things like that, and um, yes, it's it's it smells like it's going to be sweeter than it is. It's it's it really is quite dry, and so definitely food wine. I'd I'd bring it out something like this. It's cook some uh, chicken and do a nice creamy mushroom sauce and have that with it, and uh, you've got the that 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 spine that will cut through any uh, fattiness in the food. Tasty. Let's see what the two new world of Pinot Gris are like. So we're in Australia first. Tim Adams. Clare Valley, 2009 Pinot Gris. Tim, actually, this is—I you know, don't know if you can see the colour from that against a blue shirt. It's almost uh, orange. Tim Adams, uh, he's a very nice guy. The only thing I have against him, he will insist on giving you knuckle-crunching handshakes, and he looks into your eyes, and if to say, and then you say, "No, do it, Tim. I'm only a weak pom." Anyway, let's see whether this is a weak po wine for a weak pom. Now, some New World Pinot Gris can descend into blobby caricature. Uh, they've overdone the oak, they've overdone the malolactic fermentation, and you're left with a fat, fleshy uh, thing that was probably nice once, but has now run to seed. This isn't one of those. This feels like it's going to be quite fresh and zingy, and it's got things like pear. People say nashi pear. I don't know. Well, I, I've never seen a nashi pear. I've never had a nashi pear. I thought a nashi pear was what Dennis the Menace fed to his dog, but um, anyway, I think maybe the nashi pear here. Peach, or very ripe orange. If sometimes, sometimes a bit of that crystallised orange character coming through too. Very tasty and a nice mix of sweet and sour. I think they've uh, left a little bit of residual sugar in there, but in the way I was talking about that core, uh, that spine going through the uh, the Hugel wine, there's something of that here. So it's um, dainty, light, fresh, the sort of wine that you think I want a really nice. Uh, uh, I want I want some. Uh, Thai food or something like that, just something that's got that mix of freshness but with the sweet and sour going on in there too, to complement a wine like that. Very impressed by that actually. Uh, I, th I, th I think he's been doing the, the, this for, for quite a while, it's probably like, he might even have done ten vintages of it, maybe not that many, five, but um, um, getting better with each one on the strength of this. Tasty. Let's see how they get on down in central Otago. Uh, this is Akarua. Tasted a couple of their Pinot Noirs recently and was very impressed. Uh, this is their 2009 Pinot Gris from uh, Central Otago, another place that it does pretty well. 
Now it's got something of those same orange, orangey citrus characters going on. Uh, maybe some of the peach, but it's more on the, um, maybe not quite as ripe as peach, in that, that spectrum of what people call stone fruit. Maybe more on the, um, the green gauge end. Um, but it smells like it's going to be, uh, again, not a rich bomb. It feels like it's, it's going to have a bit of restraint to it. It's going to be quite full in flavour, but reined in, which is what I like in a wine. Well, it's a fuller, richer style than the Tim Adams, and um, uh, really has got quite a whack of fruit in there. And it's uh, yes, it's, this, this is where you feel that more peachiness coming through. Maybe it, it wasn't as peachy on the nose, but here's where you get that juicy. Uh, and, and but the good thing about it is it's not got, gone into the tinned peach spectrum. It's gone into the uh, ripe but not overripe peach. And um, You've got this, no, it's again, a little bit of a backbone, bit of nuttiness going through there. Keeps it all fresh. So, it's yes, it's got this richness, but, yeah, but all held together. Nothing wobbling over the top of your, no muffin top wine, if you want to call it that. I'm enjoying these. Um, let's see whether I enjoy the last two, which are both Gewurztramina. Uh, first from Alsace, Hugel again, 2009. There are some people in Alsace who, when they make wine, it's almost like they want to impress you with power and intensity. For me, the Hugel style has always been a little bit more subtle than that. So uh, they would rather they would rather have wines that pass the empty bottle test. So in other words, you try all the big blousy ones and you say, that's very, very nice. Now, can you just go and sit in a corner, darling, and I'll just have a bit more of this one. So uh, this feels like it's, it, yes, it's got those classic aromas. It's got a little bit of that lychee, but not too much. A little bit of um, ripe nuttiness, uh, some of the, the uh, rose petal characters. But again, it doesn't feel like it's come from a scent shop. It feels like it's come from a, a, a vineyard. And it's got this quite stern, toasty, nutty dryness. Yes, it's exotic. Yes, it's got these um, quite open, ever so slightly ginger-like characters, as well as the rose petals and the, the classic Turkish delight character and that bit of lychee. Um, but yes, it's it, it, again, it feels nice mix of richness and restraint. If I get boring on richness and restraint, write to me or put a comment on one of these videos and say, don't use it so much. So every time you use it, Simon, you have to give 5p to um, um, whatever. Very tasty wine, that. Uh, Gewürztraminer isn't my f wine of choice. Uh, a lot of the time, because when you open a bottle, it's almost a bit too much for its own good. But that one has got uh, everything nicely in balance. And um, I might, that might, might have another glass of that later, but uh, hey, I've got other bits of work to do. Now, final one. Uh, Miguel Torres. We are in Chile now with his Santa Dina uh, Gewürztraminer Reserve 2010. Give it a whirl. And I like the smell of this too. Um, you never quite know what to expect when you've got New World Gewürztraminer. Sometimes people want to go over the top. Sometimes people pick it far too early and uh, miss out on the... Um, yeah, because the aromas are some of the things that develop in the last few stages of ripening. Uh, this smells remarkably like the Hugel. It's got a bit of that nuttiness. It's got a bit of that... Uh, the, the, all those uh, classic Gewürztraminer characters, lychees, rose petals. Uh, it's got those but it's not got them in over-the-top quantities. It smells like it's going to be a, a quite tight, refreshing wine. And it is good, but for me, what marks the Hugel out as being um, a more classy wine? This, the, 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 the Torres has got a bit of what I call the lemon jelly characters. There's just something in there that feels a bit too um, confected, uh, just a little bit too forced. It feels like... Um, uh, the, the vineyards, there's not too much of a vineyard talking here. It feels like there's a great variety and a winemaking uh, process talking. Whereas in the Hugel, I can feel something of the soil coming through. There's something, they're what I call life beyond fruit. Um, tasty wine still, uh, but I would take the Hugel any day. Uh, but nice set of uh, five wines and um, see you soon.